that you will lose the uh, introduction anyhow, don't worry. Um, then we have salinity with CTD. And for in situ measurements, we have current meters, floats, drifters, gliders, research vessels, CTD, XBT, and so on. For the remote sensing, and we have here, we use the remote sensing technique, satellites, ADCP, and HF radar. All these are means that you can do these measurements being outside of the sea eventually. Oil area measurements are the, uh, the measurements which where we use the fixed current meters, research vessels, fixed CTD, XBT, moorings and ADCP. So that means that we are fixed at a certain point and we measure at that point, we measure the evolution, temporal evolution of the, of the salinity, temperature and currents. On the other hand, we have the, the Lagrangian measurements where we use the floats, profilers and drifters, which are following the, 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 the flow. So in that case, we, uh, first of all, we, we are able to uh, measure the, uh, the, the velocity. We can measure the, the all different kind of parameters, uh, temperature, salinity, chlorophyll, where we simply put on these three, uh, three types of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of platforms. We put the, the, uh, the chlorophyll measurements, uh, temperature, salinity, whatever you decide to do it. Or we can also do the measurements of the, of the meteorological uh, sensors. For example, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the drifters where we are, which are always at the surface, you can put there the, the, the measurements, the, uh, the instrumentation to measure the, the wind, uh, the, the air temperature, uh, atmospheric pressure and so forth. But always taking into consideration that you are measuring along the path of the flow in the, in the. now let's first uh, look to look at uh, talk about the uh, the research vessel uh, you this is one of the research vessel what is uh, and these are uh, ocean going ships so that means they have a specific uh, they are they have a specific use to do the uh, the oceanographic measurements so they are uh, capable uh, be seaworthy and capable of riding out better uh, bad weather and because they should work at uh, at uh, different and in, 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 uh, in uh, very difficult meteorological and sea conditions typical ocean going surface vessels are 50 air to 80 meter long have totally space around 1000 to 2000 tons and this is the, that's important, you can have the 10 to 20 scientists on board. So the, the scientists, they, they obviously, what they do, they, at first point, they do the sampling. They do the measurements, direct measurements. On the, on the second, second uh, point, they can do the uh, onboard data analysis or data uh, quality control in order to have the, uh, all the, um, all the uh, in order when you get out from the ship that you have already quality control data um, here is the uh, one another uh, research vessel this is their uh, OGS Explorer our OGS uh, research vessel and uh, you can see that they do also the measurements and the in the Antarctic areas um, uh, is the um, uh, the endurance of this ship is 20 to 25 days. This is, you know, this this is how, when I when I told you before uh, when we were talking about the uh, cruises, what has been done, uh, what cruise, what have been done in uh, history of oceanography on uh, in the uh, in early uh, days of the uh, of the development of oceanography. They, they used to cover the entire ocean, so they have to have the 20 to 25 days autonomy in order to uh, not to be uh, forced every day or every two days enter into the, into the, uh, into the harbor. They typically have this uh, speed, the operating speed of 10 to 12 knots. 
What they do, what they simply do is that they, uh, uh, why this, uh, we say that this is the, uh, the oil area measurements? Because at each point, at each single station, the, uh, the ship has to stop and then do the vertical profiling of, the, uh, of, of what they, uh, what they uh, uh, vertical profiling of temperature, salinity, or even uh, currents, or chlorophyll, or all the parameters what are uh, what the ships are able to measure also the ships are doing the uh, the geological measurement the sedimentological measurements the analysis of the uh, of the um, of the bottom of the of the sea of the sea of the ocean by the way uh, you can if you want you can uh, you can ask questions but i can see that you are that the uh, that the microphone is uh, uh, is not connected. Can you uh, you cannot uh, you cannot intervene? No. We can. Oh, you can. Oh, God. Oh, let me hear your voice every now and then. Okay. Good. Uh, so this is the. Uh, 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 so we have the reverse. So what? How do we do the measurements of temperature, salinity, oxygen, nutrients, and traces? We have to have. We have to put down our um, uh, our uh, instrument at a certain depth, and then do at this certain depth. We do have to do the measurements. And uh, the earliest temperature measurements at some depth below the surface were made by bringing a water sample from the deck of the boat of the ship into the given depth and measuring the sample temperature with the mercury mercury thermometer why do we uh, we have to have the uh, the uh, uh, the an insulated bucket insulated bucket you will be used to pick up the 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 uh, the, uh, the, uh, the sample of the seawater why do we need the sample of seawater we do need it for determining the salinity, because at that time, at a very uh, early uh, time of oceanography, if you remember, we had to uh, determine uh, salinity by chemical methods. So we had to pick up the physically the, the sample from a certain depth, bring it to the surface, do the, our chemical analysis, determine the uh, the. Um, the salinity but then we have also to determine the oxygen because oxygen has been determined uh, by by uh, chemical methods the only the only uh, parameter which has been measured in c2 at the given depth is the temperature so how do we do this temperature to eliminate uh, the this these are the you can see here these are the, the instruments that using the multiple sampling and averaging has required, as I told you before, 0 0.001 degrees Celsius. And this was the reversing thermometer. This was the, uh, I will now in a few minutes will tell you about the, uh, the, the this kind of, uh, it's very ingenious uh, uh, thermometer, which helps us to eliminate the, the, the influence of, of pressure. Because at a certain depth, you measure the temperature, yes, but you measure the temperature. But what, what atmospheric, what uh, sea pressure looks the, works there? It presses also the the mercury. So the the real uh, the, the the apparent temperature, what you measure this, is higher than a real temperature due to the, the to the squeezing of the of the reservoir of mercury at that very depth. Therefore, we have somehow to eliminate the influence of the pressure at that depth. It's not the uh, it's not the eliminating the potential temperature. It's not the calculating the potential temperature. It's simply eliminating the uh, the the pressure influence at that specific depth. So, what has been done? The instrument is lowered to the desired depth. Mercury from a reservoir at the bottom rises in proportion, obviously, to the outside temperature. When the desired depth is reached, the thermometer is turned upside down, is reversed, but the flow of mercury is now interrupted at the capillary appendix, and only the mercury that was above the break point is collected in the lower part of the glass pipe. So that means that, that if you 
bring this uh, your instrument to the surface, yes, uh, the, the the temperature has been to a certain de uh, to, to to a certain degree registered. It's fixed at this specific depth where it has been measured. So. Uh, and to eliminate, see here, to eliminate the pressure and the effect of pressure, it compresses the pipe and causes some more mercury to rise above the break point. During the lower distance, the thermo thermometer is enclosed in a pressure resistant glass housing. If such a protected reversing thermometer is used in a conjunction with unprotected, the difference between these two thermometers can be used to determine the pressure and thus the depth at which the reading has been taken. So we can determine not only the temperature, but we determine also the, uh, the, 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 the depth at which the, the temperature has been uh, measured with the precision, with largest precision, because you, you use the, 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 the cave, but this, uh, the, sorry, the, um, the string, and this string, and you measure, see, you can say, okay, why don't I measure the length of the string and determine from that the, the depth at which my instrument is, uh, is uh, fixed. But if you put this at 1,000 meter depth, the, the error is much larger, it's very large because the, your, your, your due to currents, your, uh, your um, uh, file can be very, very, uh, it's not vertical, obviously. And therefore, we need to determine the, uh, the, 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 with high precision the depth at which our thermometer is, uh, is uh, uh, placed. And this is the difference between unprotected reversing thermometer and protected thermometers, which is due to the influence of the pressure. The reversing thermometer require a research vessel as platform and are used in conjunction with Nansen or Niskin bottles or a multi-sample device. I will see now what is the... This is the... Uh, this is this instrument, this is the, uh, the uh, reverse thermometer, and it has this, uh, in this, uh, in its upright position, not reversed, and you put it down into the sea within this position here. The merc mercury rises from here, from the reservoir, up to the, uh, to the uh, glass cylinder, uh, uh, up to the, to the real temperature. The green thermometer, uh, thermometer is auxiliary thermometer which gives the ambient temperature. So you can, this is another thing what you have to take care of, is when you take out your thermometer and you read your temperature, you read the temperature not at the depth where the temperature has been measured, but you read the temperature at the surface. So you have to correct, you introduce an additional correction to your temperature, to your uh, measured temperature or to, to what you read from the thermometer taking into consideration that at the surface you have, for example, 25 degrees, but at, the, at uh, 1,000 meters you have 5 degrees. So the, the correction has to take care of these differences. Okay, so... Uh, and here is the Nansen bottle. Nansen bottle is uh, simply a, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the water sample, sampler, which, you, which is used to pick up the, the, the samples, to pick up the, uh, the, the, the water at a certain depth, at a given depth. Again, you have, the, uh, you have the depth at which you have taken the sample. You have the temperature there, but you need the salinity in order to complete your state variable. You need the pressure at which, or depth at which, your samples have been taken. You can also want to determine the oxygen, the chlorophyll, uh, and, and so forth. And, and also, for that case, you, you need the, 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 the instrument which really samples the instrument, the samples the water at the given depth. This is very, very nicely, nicely done. What is here? You can see here, this, is, this, this, this guy here is a messenger. When it reaches the certain depth, you, f you stop it, you, you leave the messenger from the, from the, from the up from the, sh from the ship, which follows the, the, the uh, goes down and give a, uh, give a push to the, uh, to the top of this, uh, of this nonsense bottles and then it reverses. Why it reverses, it's 
it closes. So that means it closes and picks up the water at a given depth, at the depth that when it has been reversed. So it is a similar situation as with the uh, <coughs> as with the thermometer. Both Nansen bottle and thermometer they reverse. By reversing, uh, thermometer registers the temperature, and at the same time Nansen bottle picks up the uh, <coughs> the um, the water at that at that depth, and then. While it reverses, there is another messenger which goes down and uh, closes another. So you have you can have a whole series of nonsense bottles along the wire. So this is how it works. So it's very, I think it's very ingenious uh, 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 instrumentation which works uh, quite nicely. And uh, then we have an Iskin bottles, which are, uh, uh, the, I would say, a modern version of this, where you don't have, uh, which are made of plastics. They, you don't have these, uh, you don't have these either inversions, but you simply have the, uh, the, the, you have the, you see the here, you have the two, two, um, uh, uh, two major modifications are there. The, you have a cylinder made from plastic, Eliminates chemical reaction between the bottle and the sample because did that one was in, in metal. Uh, especially if we are you know, if we are you want to measure the tracers, if you want to measure the tracer, then it's essential to have the the uh, the plastic uh, the plastic uh, uh, sampling sampler. The Niskin bottle is fixed on the wire it, uh, at two points it, instead of one. So it doesn't reverse, and it makes it easier to increase its volume, sample volume. So it can the the Niskin is on typically on the order that has the volume of one meter and something. While Niskin can have a different size. <coughs> they are used obviously in both cases with the in, in conjunction with the reversing thermometers. In Niskin case of the Niskin bottle, the reversing thermometers is reversing by itself, not the whole bottle. In the case of Niskin, uh, it both uh, both thermometer and bottle uh, reverses. Okay. Then we have uh, uh, a newer development, which is the measurements of hydrographic properties, temperature, salinity, oxygen, nutrients, and traces. <coughs> you have uh, first of all, you have a CTDs where we pass from the chemical. <coughs> From chemical uh, uh, determination of salinity to to uh, uh, to using the uh, the conductivity and uh, and from conductivity we determine the uh, the salinity. Temperature is also determined the uh, from from by by resistance. So uh, we in that case we don't need really to pick up the the sample from a, from a certain depth. We simply can do the, the continuous measurement from the surface to the bottom without stopping our instrument. So this has increased the uh, the vertical resolution of our measurements and also the uh, the uh, shorten the time employed for for do the measurements. Uh, uh, at, a, at a time when there was uh, Niskin bottles or or even. Uh, when they were used to use the bottles, we define we used to define this something which is called this uh, st uh, standard depth in the ocean, standard depth of measurements in the ocean, which means that we have zero, five, ten, twenty, fifty, hundred, and two hundred meters, and so forth. So we have higher uh, 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 special resolution in the surface, and then we decrease this resolution deeper we go. Uh, because obviously we, don't, we didn't have enough Niskin bottles to do the very high uh, resolution, temporal resolution of the measurements. Here we have the uh, as high vertical resolution as you want. We can measure every centimeter the vertical distribution of temperature and salinity, which is a very large, uh, very large uh, mm, progress with respect to the to the. Uh, to the previous uh, classical methods. Um, 
so uh, it, obviously we have to calibrate CTD systems uh, um, by comparing their reading uh, regularly against more stable instruments. They are therefore always used in conjunction the reversing thermometers and the multi-sample device. So what you typically do in addition to the uh, in addition to the CDD, what you do, you pick up the, uh, you you use you do the measurements with a certain number of uh, of Niskin or or uh, Nansen bottles, and compare these data with what you measure with uh, with the conductivity in order to calibrate or compare their mere readings with uh, with more stable with more stable. Um, Measurements. Here are the multiple water samples, uh, which is the uh, which is uh, uh, used in order. If you want to to do the sampling uh, in a, in a different depth, if you want to do uh, sampling for the parameters which you are not able to determine automatically, like uh, oxygen, as I told you before, like nutrients, uh, like phytoplankton uh, density. Uh, the zooplankton density, uh, bacteria, uh, all these things uh, 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 request the, uh, the picking up the directly the, the, the sample from the given depth. And therefore, what has been de the developed is a multiple sampler. Multiple water sample device is this guy, this guy here, which has uh, 24 or 12 uh, uh, bottles which is uh, uh, which is also associated with the temperature uh, measurements as, uh, and as you can see here are the thermometers associated with these bottles so we, you have also the measurements of the of the temperature then when you when you bring your your guys at the surface then you pick up the cache the, the the samples and you go and do the, your analysis, biological or chemical, whatever you want. So these multiple samples uh, uh, enable you to do the rather high vertical resolution because 24 samples, 2,000 meters, you can have a pretty large, uh, large uh, uh, vertical resolution. The uh, Hydrographic properties also can be uh, can be done on uh, uh, along the way of the ship. So what you do is simply you uh, pump the water from the from the uh, uh, from the intake of the ship. You pump the water into the uh, uh, into the CTD, and then it continues the reading temperature and salinity at the surface. So you pump the water from the surface into the into the this instrument here which then measures directly uh, temperature and salinity which is a we call it thermosalinograph model which then gives us the very very high uh, very uh, detailed uh, distribution of temperature and salinity at the surface which is very very nice uh, important uh, important information so can you imagine if you have uh, on one hand, if you have the measurements from satellite of the sea surface height, on one hand, and on the other hand, you have the temperature and salinity at the surface. What you do, what you can do, having the temperature and salinity at the surface, you can determine the density. So you can have both the density field and the sea surface height field at the surface, thanks to this kind of measurements. Obviously. You have to take care and take into consideration and this depends on the, how fast ship passing the area, what is the, 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 what is the, the speed of the ship, you know, you can, the, the, the ship cannot cover the, as large area as the satellite. So you can zoom these, uh, these measurements at a very specific area and then do your comparison if you want with the, with the satellite data. <coughs> then <coughs> is uh, <coughs> measurements of hydrographic properties, temperature, salinity, oxygen, nutrients, with XBTs. XBTs is not a very ecological instrument. Uh, I will now explain to you. It's not very ecological in the sense that <coughs> it's expandable body thermograph. What it does has been used, was used better than 
uh, has been used. It was used by oceanographers for many years to obtain information on the temperature structure in the ocean to depth of about 1500 meters. The XBT is shown is a probe which is dropped from the ship, measures the temperature as it falls through the water. Then it's a very, um, uh, very small wire is with very small wire is connected into the in uh, to the surface instrument to the computer and sends the information temperature into the computer. When it reaches the, the depth of 1500 meters, the device uh, uh, the wires is uh, broken and this goes simply to the bottom. This is why I told it's not very ecological because by throwing these uh, this metal stuff uh, to, to, the, to, the, to the sea and leave it at the sea bottom is not a very ecological behavior and, uh, and it's not used anymore but it's uh, something which uh, it was very very interesting for, for, the, for the oceanography because, the, uh, uh, because this has, can be used by ships of opportunity by commercial ships. So you simply give a certain number of XBTs and you have this launcher, you give this launcher to, to the crew members of uh, uh, any commercial ship and tell them, okay, please do uh, use uh, XBT every 10, uh, 10 miles. So what they do without stopping the ship, they just simply, uh, they simply do these, these measurements on, from the moving ship. So you have, again, very nice uh, uh, spatial coverage uh, of these measurements, but this time on not only the surface, but also in the vertical from 0 to 1500 meters. Let me close the door because it's uh, cool. Okay. I think it's better now. Uh, so this, these are XBTs. Uh, and this is the, this is how they do it. You know, it's just like a, like a pistol. You can see that it's uh, it's uh, you you put this uh, this sound here into this kind of uh, of uh, of a pistol, and then you you uh, do this, and then you see how it goes down. The ship is going. And then it goes down, and uh, it goes by the simply by falling down uh, and measuring the vertical, uh, the vertical uh, profile of temperature. It can measure also the vertical profile of salinity, so it is uh, both salinity and temperature. Uh, in that case, it's, uh, uh, it's also even more complete measurements because gives you the uh, gives you the uh, the both. Uh, parameters of state. Now we can go to uh, measurements of dynamical properties. For to measure dynamical properties we, uh, we use obviously uh, current meters. Current meters uh, um, as uh, currents as you well know the, uh, the uh, currents are the vectors so you need to measure both uh, direction and the magnitude. So uh, uh, it can record the uh, speed and direction of the current, or it can record east-west or north-south component of the current. With both methods required directional information, all current meters therefore incorporate a magnetic compass to determine the orientation of the instruments. First we started, the, there was the uh, mechanical current meters, which has the rotor, they have the rotor, you can see these uh, there are three types of rotor which has been constructed and uh, let me go back uh, and these type of rotors has uh, they, they have their uh, their, uh, their different uh, characteristic mechanical characteristics they often measure uh, speed correctly on the, if only if they they point into the current and have to be oriented in to phase the current. If they are not phase the current, they don't measure uh, correctly. So 
the, uh, the orientation of a current meter has to be such that it always look into the direction of the current. So these, uh, these instruments are therefore fitted with a large vane which, uh, which turns the entire instrument into the, uh, and, and the propeller into the current. Propellers can be designed to have a cosine response with the angle of incidence of the flow. Two such propellers arranged uh, at 90 degrees will resolve current vectors and do not require an orienting vein. But you know, this, these are details I don't want to go into these details. And uh, see, this, these are, this, is the, this is the instrument, uh, one of the classical uh, uh, electronical instruments. What it has, it has the, uh, this large vein which turns this into the direction of the current. Here is the propeller and here inside is the, uh, the, the magnetic, uh, the, the magnet. Uh, inside is the, the, the computer or, or the memory. So the instrument records the, records the um, the, the current inside and then you get up when you when you finish your measurements you take out the, the instruments you uh, transfer these data into the computer you do your analysis and whatever you want <coughs> and the uh, with the exception of current meters that uses two propellers with cosine response at 90 degrees to each other Mechanical current meters measure current speed by counting propeller or rotor evolutions per unit time and current direction by determining the vane orientation at fixed intervals. So the vane determines practically the, uh, the, the, the direction and, it's, and the, the number of rotations it determines the magnitude of this current. So the uh, so this is the that's a very very nice instrument. It has been used for for decade. It was used for decade in uh, in late uh, 80s and and early 90s, and uh, it worked uh, rather well. What you do then? What what you uh, what what you want to do is you you moor your current meter at a certain depth. Uh, you. Take the take it there for some times, and then pick it out, take it take it out, and do your analysis from uh, at the computer. Here he, he, he comes into into play all your uh, pre uh, pre knowledge about what you are going to study. As I told you before, if you want to study the uh, the tides, then your current meter can stay there for. Uh, for a month, for example, you have uh, like a 30, 40 uh, uh, tidal cycle measurements, and then you you get the, the all the information you need from for as far as the tidal cycle is concerned at a specific at a specific depth, at a specific position. If you want to do to study the influence of the wind on currents, then you know that the wind changes uh, on a temporal scale, it's on the order of uh, a week or a month or even seasonal, then you have to take your current meter in a in a, in the sea for uh, for a year or so. The uh, obviously, if you put your current meter at a single point in the vertical, then you get the information only at that point. But you don't know what is the what is happening with the with the current measures below and in the vertical in, in the water column. You remember that when we were talking about the the um, the thermal wind relationship, that the current changes with depth. It changes with depth if you have the the uh, the density horizontal density gradient. Therefore, if you know that in the area where you are doing your measurements, considering uh, the uh, the geostrophic assumption you have to do the measurements at more depth in order to resolve the vertical uh, distribution of current in uh, in, uh, in the, the, the distribution of the current in the vertical water column this kind of instruments let me put also the jacket because it's coming colder and colder when you are not here they don't uh, they don't heat it so 
the uh, a lot of uh, a lot of studies uh, a lot of studies and and also the the, the modern uh, measurements uh, for example the measurements of the western boundary current transport uh, which is essential for studying the climatic uh, uh, changes it has been done with this with this kind of uh, uh, with this kind of measurements at, this, uh, at a single point, at a single depth, but in the vertical, it, uh, getting the information of more than in at one depth. So uh, uh, this is the. Uh, then we have electromagnetic current. Meter. In that case, we don't have any rotation part. Exploit the fact that an electric conductor moving through magnetic field induces an electric current. Because we know that the uh, the, the seawater is uh, an electrical conductor, then moving through magnetic field induces the electrical current, and we can we can measure this electrical current and then determine exactly what kind of uh, uh, this electrical current meter measures the voltage resulting from the motion of a conductor, which is water flow, seawater. If we were uh, fresh water, it would not be possible to measure the currents with this current meter. And then we have this kind of uh, current meter. This has been used uh, less than, than the other one. Then we have the acoustic current meter, are based on the principle that sounds is a compression wave that travels with the medium. So we we have a burst of sound. If generally we generate burst of sound at the transmitter, it will arrive at the receiver B earlier than at the receiver A, having been carried by current by ocean current. So a typical acoustic current meter will have two orthogonal sounds of approximately 100 meter left depth length, millimeter length. And high frequency sound pass is transmitted simultaneously from each transducer, and the difference in arrival time to, of the sound for the sound traveling in the opposite direction gives the uh, gives the water velocity along the path. So it simply uses the uh, the uh, the, cha the differences in the uh, in the velocity uh, uh, due to the uh, due to the uh, compression or uh, compression wave. Uh, which flows through the current field. Here are wave measurements. Wave measurements are these, these kind of stuff. They, they are measure wave height, wave period, and wave direction with this, uh, this buoy, which stays at the surface. Oops, sorry. Sorry, they will, I have forgotten to. Sorry. Uh, so the uh, this is, this is called the wave rider buoy. Wave rider buoy is uh, following simply the waves uh, up and down, and it has a vertical accelerometer built into the wave rider, which measures the buoy acceleration generated by the waves. So it determines the height, wave height, and wave wave period. Here we are talking about the the periods on the order of uh, of a seconds. 10 seconds is a typical period of the wind waves. These are the wind waves. These are measured in wind waves. <coughs> and we are talking about the, the height of these, these waves on the order of 10 meters, up to 10, even 20 meters. So it's, they are very high, they are very, uh, very, uh, uh, very short period. You can, you remember that we have Wind, wind waves which have a period, say, a freak, uh, period on, on around uh, 10 seconds. We have a tsunami which has a period of about 10 to 20 minutes. We have tides, we have a period which have a period on the order of a day. And then we have the, uh, the for example, the Kelvin waves which has a period on the order of a few days. Or even the Rossby waves which has a Time scale on the order of a season or even a years. So it's, you have all the 
uh, all the spectrum of waves, but here we are talking about the measurements of the wind waves, of these short, uh, 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 of the short waves induced by the wind. Tide gauges. In with tide gauges, as uh, the name says, it's used for 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 measuring the tides. Have uh, uh, long wavelength and known period. They are they have very precise and very de determined period. So they uh, we the only uh, we are uh, we are measuring the wave height, the waves, the height of these waves. And we, uh, or tidal range, so different between uh, highest and lowest uh, sea level. And then we have, uh, we, uh, we have also wave-induced currents, but wave-induced currents has to be done with the current meters, not with this, uh, with this instrument here. <coughs> how, how it is, uh, how it is uh, constructed this? It constructed this uh, as a steaming well gauge, which is, here is this, the well, which is constructed at, at the, in the land, and it has to remove these uh, wind waves. These are the wind waves you see, and these wind waves are not. We are not interested in wind waves. We want to filter them out because we want to, to uh, address only the tidal tidal uh, oscillations. And tidal oscillations are have a period on the order of uh, of a day. Therefore. If uh, we don't have to put inside the the wind waves because they would introduce only the 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 noise into our system, therefore we have to have a still in well ga gauge. And here you have the uh, and this connection, and here is the connection. You can see this is the the connecting channel, and this uh, connection acts as a low pass filter. It doesn't leave entering the uh, the, uh, the high frequency oscillations coming from the wind waves. It is so restricted this uh, this uh, this connection that uh, the backward and forward motion of the water associated with wind waves and other waves of short period cannot pass through. So because there is a strong uh, friction and that they cannot pass through, only the slow change of water level associated with the tide can enter the wind as well. This change of water level is picked up by a float, and we have here the float, and this is transmitted into the pen, and it's recorded on the paper. It used to be recorded on the paper. So, uh, as a result of that, you have the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, recording, the the analog recording of the sea of the sea level changes. Uh, on uh, on the paper attached on the drum to the drum. So you typically what you do is you change uh, every week you change the paper and you have the analogous recording of the tides uh, every uh, on a weekly basis or on the daily basis. It depends how high resolution you want. Because you know you have to remember that it's not the and if you are talking about the sea level oscillations tidal or low frequency sea level oscillations, we would like, we, we eliminate the, the wind waves. But we might be interesting, for example, in a tsunami, because tsunami is a 20, 20 minutes or 10 to 20 minutes period. In that case, we have to have a larger, we have to have a larger, uh, higher, higher resolution. Therefore, we have to, uh, uh, stretch our uh, uh, recording uh, paper so that we can, uh, uh, instead of having the uh, weekly recording, we can have a, a daily recording. In that case, we have the higher resolution of uh, higher temporary resolution. So, uh, <coughs> the, uh, the, so the time gauge cannot be used, should, is not used only for uh, for for tide gauges, but it's also for for tide uh, tidal oscillations. Air is used also for for the uh, can be used also for uh, uh, for for example for for tsunamis. You know the uh, uh, it's uh, there is a phenomena which is just to to let you know it's a phenomena which uh, you probably haven't heard for that. 
Yes, uh, there is a tsunami which are the waves on the other 20, 20 minutes. But there are something what is called the meteo tsunami. Meteo tsunami is the uh, is the more is, are the waves more or less of the same period as uh, as the um, as the tsunami what we know as, uh, but it's uh, induced by meteorological forcing. What is happening? Uh, it, it is in the case of the regular tsunami where the 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 uh, the wave at the open sea is generated this relatively small amplitude wave is generated at the open sea by small movements of the bottom or by by erosion. Uh, in, in the case of meteor tsunami, small oscillations of the sea level of the atmospheric pressure at the open sea generates very small oscillations of the sea level on the order of a centimeter or so. So you generate these small waves, uh, small amplitude waves, which then tra travel from the area where it originates and goes toward the coast. When it arrives to the coast, it enters into the resonance with a certain, uh, with a certain base, and then uh, you can, and they generate a very high oscillations on the order of a meter or so. So there are these meteor tsunamis, which are uh, of a similar uh, similar nature as uh, as a classical tsunami, but they are induced by meteorological perturbation by per perturbation in the field of atmospheric pressure. They can uh, do the, the as uh, the, the large um, damages uh, as as a meteor tsunami as a classical tsunami, but they do it. Uh, in, uh, in some specific places, in uh, places which are very limited in space, in some bays. Uh, for example, in the Adriatic or in the Mediterranean, there are some, uh, some harbors where these meteor tsunamis are rather frequent phenomena and they can destroy, they can uh, uh, cause rather large damages. And in that case, tight gauges are a very useful instrument in order to, to understand that. To understand the uh, uh, to understand the, 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 the mechanism which generate these uh, meteor tsunamis, uh, in, in addition to these uh, tide gauges, you have to have also the the registration of the high frequency oscillations of the uh, of the sea of the atmospheric pressure, so that you comparing these two, you can understand what is the what kind of oscillations of the atmospheric pressure generate these kind of meteor tsunamis. Which then, and you can, in a certain extent, uh, predict these these guys. And then there is another uh, tide gauge uh, sensor, which is the, uh, uh, which he, in that case, tide gauge uh, when you have a steering well gauges, you measure the sea level. But you can measure the the. the uh, you can measure the sea level also by, by measuring the atmospheric pressure, the, the pressure at the bottom. So you have the pressure uh, sensor at the bottom, which measures really the, uh, the weight of the water column above you, and then which gives you the possibility to determine the, the, the water, the sea level height. How do you do? You know the, 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 high, the weight of the water column, but you have to know in order to to determine the sea level height, you have to uh, to, the, to, the, to determine the the, uh, the, 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 the the density or the weight of the water column, and this you can do by knowing the density. So you integrate the density from the surface to the bottom, and then from there you calculate the sea level height. So. The, these pressure gauges can be can be used, but only if you measure if you have the measurements the uh, the, 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 the the density or the weight of the water column. The the uh, this instrument is used very often to detect tsunamis because they have a very they, you you put them <coughs> at the bottom and uh, and do these. Measurements uh, on the on the <coughs> on the path of the <coughs> of the tsunami. 
you will see later that uh, tsunami can be detected also by, by uh, sea level measurements from the satellite because uh, and uh, for example the first uh, the first um, tsunami which has been uh, detected or uh, measured uh, from satellite is uh, the, uh, the famous tsunami in 2004 in Indian Ocean for Christmas time and uh, there was uh, there was a very good recording of that uh, of that tsunami from from uh, from satellite you will see later on that we can use another instrument to measure uh, to measure the uh, advancement or a progression of, uh, of tsunami from another instrument but we'll be <coughs> discussing this later so this is the that's uh, that's going back to the to the uh, to this uh, what you have seen before uh, these are the path of the ship and you see this why it, it took us five years because if the ship had to stop every every certain number of time and made these measurements with the Niskin bottles with the reversing thermometer in order to get the vertical distribution of temperature and salinity. These are the reference and reading materials for uh, for those who wants to uh, to you know, to go into more uh, details with this. And uh, so uh, so this is the first first part of our of our uh, of our uh, uh, oops. what did I do now? Um, let's see let's see for instrumentation okay this is introduction okay let's see this is the let me do the are you here can you hear me yes okay yes yes but let me put the uh, the next uh, group of slides taking away some let me call the, the operator because I have to uh, I have to copy another I have to copy another file eh, pronto buongiorno e eh, sempre dalla H volevo copiare un altro file ma adesso non so ci sono tutte le tutte le USB sono occupate se mi può dare una mano grazie Grazie. Grazie. Okay, he will uh, he will come soon to help me. Uh, so, uh, do you, what do you prefer, this thing of our instrumentation or the other one? B is here. What? What do you prefer these two set of lectures? The one the previous one where I was talking about the. Uh, phenomenology or the instrumentation? Uh, instrumentation? Georgia, what did you say? Uh, this is very new for me, so uh, I like it. Okay. Yeah. I like both. And uh, so, you, most of you are for instrumentation? Or no? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> please, when the guy comes, please um, remind him to do the recording session so that we can each record the class from our PC. Uh, I, I, can you, can you, 
You can record it. Please record it down here. When I click on record, it tells me to tell the person to do some record permission, so I catch. Ah it. yes, you need permission from the host. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, th I think it's it's supposed to be recorded on YouTube, so you're able to watch it. I think. I don't want you to. You are not the kid. You are the I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand because here the, uh, the this this guy is not very good. Tell me again. <laughs> you have you have problem with recordings? I can't record from my end. I don't know what the other guy. Well, we try. Please request recording permission ah, from the meeting for host. The, so. For the the Maybe professor, you can ask uh, to to the guy. To what? To do? To what? What is the problem? Because we can record the lesson. Ah, you Maybe cannot record are, the lesson. We don't have the, ah. we don't have the permission. Ah, record. maybe maybe the permission is uh, given only to me. Yes. But yes, so you have to give to us the record. Yeah, but <laughs> but. Uh, but uh, uh, the, the, the lectures are recorded here at, OG, at the ICTP. So everyone is on YouTube. Uh, uh, Nana, where is Nana? No, no, no. Yes. Uh, no. no. Yes. Uh, no. Yes. Uh, no. Yes. Uh, no. Oh, la lezione è registrata e noi la carichiamo su YouTube, come sempre. Ah, però immediatamente o eh, un po' qualche giorno? No, diciamo che se lei fa le lezioni con quelle nove, sì. ci mette un'ora dopo che ha finito il file pronto eh. e poi io lo carico insomma, quindi diciamo che allora di pranzo è, è su YouTube. Sì. No, vabbè. Have you heard this? This is in Italian, but you have to learn some Italian, otherwise. <laughs> uh, hey guys. I understood. Yeah. I it. Did you understand? No. Uh, that's bad, that's bad. You can find the, the lecture on YouTube uh, after lunch, I think. Oh, okay. okay. Can, can you please give us the right to record from our pieces, or we just have to go to YouTube? Go to YouTube. No, go to YouTube, because we... Disabled. Uh, Oliver, you are only two. Oh, look! Uh, you can you can do that with Windows. How? Uh, I will send you a message after this lecture. Thank you. They are the best, not the other people over there. Quindi apriamo la due. Sì, Sì, perfetto. Che ci deve essere Uh, did you do you see the the screen? No. No, okay. no you don't see the screen. Allora, no. provo a farlo io. Sì. Questo? No. Qui? Sì. Ah, ok. Selezionare. No, Yes. Ah, you're there. Ah, okay. Right. Adesso si, adesso si vede. Ah, okay, good. Grazie. Okay, so uh, you will have it to YouTube uh, the lectures <coughs> right after lunch. Don't eat too much for lunch. So you can uh, so you can uh, you can uh, study immediately after lunch. What? <laughs> Good. So these are the. Uh, oops. Okay. Okay. So uh, okay. these are the autonomous uh, uh, systems for measurements, which are now the uh, the newer generation of uh, measurements. 
which are obviously has all these uh, uh, where we have uh, eliminated more a lot of these uh, problems what we have seen before with the classical instruments. We don't have to uh, to uh, pick up the more the the, the samples. Uh, uh, the uh, the contact with the sea is uh, relatively reduced. We re uh, reach the higher uh, uh, spatial and temporal resolution. We can uh, we can uh, auto we have automatized the, uh, the the measurements and so forth. So these are the uh, these are the, uh, the the evolution further evolution of our of our uh, uh, studies. And now we will first talk about the moorings. Moorings means that we have the uh, the fixed measurements uh, at a certain point, which we call the Eulerian measurements. What means that we are doing the uh, the measurements at the uh, the local changes of the variables. So, if you think in terms of the of the derivative, this is the uh, the partial derivative of the uh, of the of uh, with time. Of uh, of some uh, some parameters or current or uh, uh, or any other parameter. So that means that we fix our measurements at a certain point, at a certain depth, at a certain location in space and time, uh, and then do the uh, do the measurements uh, with as high uh, resolution as we want. Uh, both uh, vertical, both spatial and temporal. Moorings are the, 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 therefore the platform wherever measurements are required at one location over extended time period. Not like this thing here. You, here. you see this scheme here at your right hand side. You can see these, uh, for example, here's an example of one, two, three, four, five, six uh, current meters which has been put at a different uh, depth in order in the in function where you want to uh, to uh, to do your measurements you have the ADCP here at the surface here we will be now discussing more about what is ADCP and here is the uh, this is the subsurface mooring because there is, there is nothing at the top which is uh, 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 which is used in deep water in situations where information about the surface layer is not essential for the instruments. But then, but the main the buoyancy at the top of the mooring is placed at some 20 to 50 meters below the sea surface. This is, this is very safe because uh, then in that case the, uh, there is a lot of, um, a lot of uh, losses of the instruments if you have this kind of uh, our system because there is a strong uh, fishery activity, ships passing over by and so forth. And in order to prevent that, you have to you, it's, uh, you preferably use the underwater mooring. Therefore, the moor, mooring is not exposed to the action of surface waves, so you don't have these oscillations on the order of 10, day, 10 meters up and, up and down, and not the risk of being damaged by ship traffic or being vandalized or stolen, because, uh, you know, we especially in the areas where uh, where the um, very uh, populated areas like for example also the Adriatic Sea where you have a strong uh, shipping uh, strong population here especially during the summertime a lot of tourists there is a lot of uh, 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 vandalized uh, cases stolen instrumentation and so forth so its risk is very high Stone fishing activity in the main, in the Adriatic, for example. So we were not able to uh, to do these measurements. We have not been able to do these measurements, especially in the northern Adriatic. Here, it's uh, it's quite impossible. We after two, one two days, we lost our instrumentation. This was almost uh, uh, guaranteed. At the, at the bottom of these uh, deep sea mooring, just above the anchor, is a remotely controllable release. This is the remotely controllable release, these blue, blue guys. And the triggering the release bring the mooring into the surface. So you have to, the possibility to trigger the release and then automatically release the, uh, the, the whole mooring which reaches the surface. And then so you can recover your mooring, otherwise it would be lost. 
So the only thing what is lost at the bottom is the, uh, the this concrete block or clump of disused railway wheels which is left at the bottom of the ocean floor. <coughs> this kind of mooring has been used. Uh, you can see here that these are now, these are the, the classical uh, electric, electronic current meter, what, what I haven't shown you before. This kind of uh, mooring has been used uh, um, quite often and uh, uh, in, during the, in these in those measurements, for example, for uh, for uh, for the prediction of El Nino, uh, you can see these are the typical uh, structure of this kind of uh, of, uh, of um, measurements, and all these measurements along the equator, what has been done to predict or to use for a prediction of El Nino, has been uh, has been carried out with this kind of, of moorings. And uh, so uh, this is quite uh, important uh, activity which is still going on and used in, uh, in, uh, in oceanography. For example, the, uh, our uh, studies of the, of the exchange of water between the, the Adriatic and the Ionian Sea has been done with this kind of, of, of moorings. We put uh, four moorings across the the Strait of Otranto across the opening of the Adriatic and we t uh, took them uh, for a uh, couple of years in order to estimate the water volume which passes through the strait and in a, in a in a unit of time in order to estimate the, the water exchange with the Adriatic and Ionian Sea for example and this is how we end up with these uh, estimates of the 300,000 meter cubic per second of, uh, of water which passes through Otranto Strait or the same thing with, uh, with the Gibraltar Strait or the exchange of water between the Mediterranean and Atlantic where you remember we were talking about uh, one million meter cubic per second what has the, these numbers has been obtained by this kind of measurements where the uh, where you, so you can you can do the vertical integral of the water one which passes through a certain number of uh, of moorings do the integral across the entire across the entire uh, inlet and then obtain this if you want to do the uh, the estimate of the average water exchange rate between the, for example, Gibraltar, Mediterranean, Adriatic, and Ionian, you have to, uh, you have to do your measurements long enough to, uh, to be able to eliminate all these, uh, these uh, frequencies, all these uh, phenomena which you are not interested in, all the tidal, you, don't, you are not interested in tidal, uh, exchange if you want to do the average exchange. You are not interested in, in uh, influence of the meteorological forcing. You are simply, you want to do your average over an entire year. So you keep your instruments for entire year, more than one year, and do the average, and then this is the number what gets out of that. Okay? Then we have the surface or the collection of uh, in addition to this, you might be interested in also in, uh, in the meteorological data because you know very well, especially you meteorologists, that, that the meteorological measurements about the sea is, are not very, very often, very often uh, carried out, especially not at the fixed points, especially not Eulerian measurements. It used to be the whole uh, series of meteorological ships uh, until up to uh, 50s, uh, 50s uh, where the ships were f more or less uh, anchored in, uh, uh, in the ocean and they were used to measure the, uh, the meteorological, uh, they used to do the meteorological observations. But uh, now this is not uh, anymore the case and uh, so the, uh, if you do your oceanographic measurements, you might be interested, because now, obviously, you know very well that now there is a, 
there is for as far as meteorological data is concerned, we have the meteorological models which are functioning very well, using the uh, you know, simulating the the date measure data. But if you have if you want to have the specific meteorological situation above the uh, your oceanographic measurements about your mooring, you want you would like to have the the measurements of meteorological you would have you would like to have meteorological observations about the uh, about the mooring, and this is the that's uh, surface layer or the collection of meteorological data in a surface mooring because in that case you cannot use any more the subsurface mooring you have to have the surface mooring so you have to have the buoy and uh, and then you have the uh, you have to measure the atmospheric pressure the rain gauge the wind vane. Then you, you would like to have uh, also the air sea heat fluxes. In order to get air sea heat fluxes, you would like to, you should have to measurements of the temperature, sea surface temperature. So you have the CTD at five me, uh, half a meter depth, you have CTD at five meter depth, and so forth. And then you have a wire which then is, is connected to anchor about in this case very specific cases 600 kilos you may want to and so you have uh, on one hand uh, you, you have on one hand the measurements of the uh, and this is the pickup line and you have you have these measurements attached to this but not uh, close enough but like kilometer or so you should have to have the oceanographic observation subsurface oceanographic uh, buoy with, uh, with the vertical uh, profiling of the, of, uh, of, the, of currents and all the parameters which you allow what you'd like to measure obviously what I didn't tell you before in uh, when we are when we are talking about the uh, about these uh, these uh, vertical measure the, the measurements of mooring you, do, you, you are not only interested in, uh, in measurements of the temperature, of the uh, uh, velocity, but you are interested also in measuring the temperature and salinity. So you might want to have the, the continuous recordings of the temperature and salinity along the line. So you do, you do have the complete <coughs> set of oceanographic data. You may want to have the chlorophyll <coughs> records as well. So these are the the the, the use of, of mooring is very useful, you know, since, since it has these uh, all these possibility. And uh, so this is the how the buoy looks like, and this is the surface buoy. And he says he says here mooring on the continental shelf where the water depth does not exceed 200 meters do not require acoustic release so the, in that case you use this kind of U type of, uh, of the uh, of mooring so you can recover this without using the acoustic release here is the example of coastal mooring in the Gulf of Trieste here with us you can see here this is the surface buoy here is the, uh, the solar, solar cells here is the uh, the uh, wind, uh, wind vane here is the uh, the rain uh, uh, rain in many measurements and here are the temperature measurements and so forth so everything is here at the top below there are the uh, and there are the measurements of the uh, uh, there are the measurements of the uh, of temperature and salinity and all chlorophyll but in this case here since this is the depth only of 30 meters there is a there is a there is a, a, a profiling sensor which goes from surface to the bottom measuring temperature and salinity and uh, chlorophyll every three four hours it depends how do you program it and then in addition you have these uh, the the, uh, the the temperature measurements next to the buoy which is obtained with ADCP. This is here, right here, <coughs> in front of the Miramare. You might, you might be able to see it from uh, if you uh, if you go there and uh, have a walk. 
and this is how it is look like this is the uh, coastal mooring again this, these are all the sensors uh, installed at uh, 200 meter uh, 2 meter above the above the uh, the sea level <coughs> And uh, here is the uh, here are the uh, the parameters which has been measured: um, uh, velocity, wind, wind and direction velocity, maximum velocity, wind and mini, uh, direction velocity, uh, temperature, air temperature, humidity, humidity, pressure, atmospheric pressure, temperature of the sea, at the surface, uh, salinity, sea surface. Uh, and time at which, which is measured. And here is the typical graph what you exit from here. The vertical profile, the what we call this uh, Hofmüller diagram of temperature, salinity, and density, which shows how these revolves with time, these well, from these measurements. All these obtained with these vertical profiling, uh, uh, what we have done what we have been doing in from the buoy. Here is the Atlas mooring to more monitoring long-term variability in tropical Pacific and Atlantic. As you can see here, this is what exactly what I have been talking to you. The uh, the uh, the Atlas mooring is in the Atlantic Ocean, where the Atlantic measures the uh, at a certain uh, at the latitude. Uh, uh, in the tropical Atlantic, which measures the uh, the whole the profile number of these uh, these uh, uh, mooring array, <coughs> which then you see that it has a conducting cable, and in that case you don't really need to uh, to take out your mooring every every uh, every time. You have the transmission data transmission directly via satellite to a computer or to the computing center uh, in, at, the, at the land. Therefore, you have the data in the real time, which is very important. You all these uh, the, um, uh, the the measurements in Atlantic and in Pacific are transmitted in real time, and this is very important especially since we are talking about the, uh, the, the prediction uh, of, for example, of, uh, of, of El Nino. If we are talking about the prediction of El Nino, it's essential that the data are transmitted in real time and then uh, assimilated into the numerical model, which then gives us the possibility to, to do the, the, the immediate prediction of what's, what will be going in uh, next uh, next days, next months, or next season. Here is the, uh, <coughs> this is the mooring pirata, which is around the equator, which has been, which is made of these, uh, these moorings, <coughs> which then measures the temperature, for example, this is the temperature measurements from zero to 300 meters. And uh, in, so these are the, the wind measurements, dynamic height obtained. You will see what is dynamic height from uh, from our from somebody who took the, uh, the this uh, this uh, exercise for the last for the final exam. And here, why do why we are always uh, concentrating on the equator? We are concentrating on the equator. Because these are the area where we have the uh, the uh, the equatorial waves or equatorial current which passes, which determines the equatorial upwelling. Uh, um, uh, where we have the Kelvin waves traveling, we have the Rossby waves, and these are the the the, the area where these these uh, these phenomena are appearing and uh, moving. Uh, I think now we will uh, will uh, stop here with this town week vehicle and uh, we'll continue next time. Um, so how, how do you like this? Be sincere, please. It's okay? Yeah. It was, it was okay.
okay? Okay, so uh, we'll see you each other the, the day after tomorrow. Yes, sir. We'll continue with this. Uh, do, do you see each other or you don't see each other? We don't see each other. You do we not see each other. We see each other. We see each other. We choose to see each other. We, we are not supposed to see each other. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, uh, somebody of you take uh, take the the um, the responsibility to to take the the list of themes. Write down the names of all of you and uh, and who pick up the right theme who did that, uh, and so give me the send me the list Jacob okay Jacob we have already done for for those who are already done it's okay but you end up with you add the all these people who are, didn't do it you sent me already no how much will you pay me Adjua. he said do it you me telling me how much yeah. but you are telling me to do it uh, I'm asking you how much will you pay <laughs> Why? If, if you do a job, what they pay you? <laughs> okay, so uh, do it please for me so that I can uh, prepare myself for this final exam, otherwise I cannot prepare myself. I don't know, I don't know. Because the, it depends when they put the, the, when they decide to have the final exam first, and second, uh, that's for sure that until, uh, until the uh, first days of April, uh, uh, there will be no, uh, there will be no uh, physical uh, interactions. Only, only, only online stuff. But uh, it's okay. So are we going to present online? Okay. Here on Zoom. Really? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I mean, we have to show our slides to people. Yeah, my screen is like one. Uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Is it possible to show slides here? Yeah, yeah, it's possible to... Mm. This one has to it. To, to, to do what? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> okay, guys. Okay. See you, okay. Uh, see you soon. See you. Have a nice day. Bye. 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 He's off, so we are the Bye. only ones left. Bye. Bye. Oh, no, he's Bye. not off. <laughs> not <laughs> you, you, you said questions and answer yourself. Enjoy. Oh, what the, you, I am not supposed to do anything, right? You do it. ICTP control, unmute. Unmute. Uh, remove. You want to remove HTTP control? Okay. Sì. Ha chiuso il meeting? Sì. Ok. Non lo sapevo? No, non lo sapevo. Perché abbiamo lo stesso meeting per tutto il giorno, per tutto ah. il collegio. Ah, scusi. Sì. Vai, sono così. Ah, c'è un altro. Sì, sì, sì. Sì, lasciamo questo per tutto il giorno. Ah, ok. Così...
Sì, sì, anche per domani. Ah, sto proprio un altro per domani. Sì, sì, sì per tutta la settimana. Sì. Perfetto, così. No, perché ho letto un po' le, le istruzioni. Mm. Eh. Ti hanno mandato i link dei video su YouTube? Sì, sì, sì. Ci sono i tutorial. Sì, 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 infatti ho guardato il tutorial. Mm. Però finché non ti metti davanti, infatti ho scaricato anche Zoom a casa nel mio computer. No, certo, eh. mettere mano è 